As we scrape to the top of the hour, it's the Now Morning Show, just about 7 o'clock in Trinidad and Tobago. And it's time to get into our next uh, chat for the morning. And of course, how much do you know about independence as we celebrate the 59th uh, independence in Trinidad and Tobago, the 59th anniversary of independence in Trinidad and Tobago. And we have an expert who will tell us all about the national flags and emblems and some of the questions that you might have been asking yourself, how did this all come about? We have with us the former ambassador and former head of the public service, Mr. Reginald Dumas. Welcome to the Now Morning Show. Good morning, Mr. Dumas. Good morning. Good, good morning and uh, happy independence to you. It's early, but we're sending you a greeting. How are you, sir? How are you planning to celebrate your day tomorrow? And what does independence really mean to you? Well... I'm planning in the first place to celebrate it. I usually don't very, very quiet. I, I, I don't do too much. And uh, what it means to me is really independence for me is a spook up here. Eh? It's in the mind. Not a question too much of a flag and an anthem. These are symbols. But it is what you want to make of yourself and your lives and your country um, by extension. That is what independence means to me. And um, I'm not sure that I'm fully satisfied with what I've been seeing over the years. Mr. Dumas, you have a lot of knowledge on how things are, how things work, how things are developed. Um, briefly take us through the process of the national emblems and how they were chosen, their meanings, and some of the people who formed this committee. The well, step back a bit in history, I suppose we'd have to do that. Um, Trinidad and Tobago was not really supposed to be an independent state on its own. That was not the original intention. We had a federation of the West Indies, and the federation was supposed to be independent in 1962. Unfortunately, there were all kinds of problems. There was a referendum in Jamaica in uh, late 1961, I think September on whether Jamaica should stay in the Federation or not. The Jamaicans decided they did not want to stay. And that led to the famous saying by Eric Williams, because there were 10 members of the Federation, that one from 10 leaves not, um, which meant that Trinidad and Tobago also proceeded to independence. We, it was very rushed, uh, because the Federation collapsed on the very day, legally and formally, that it was supposed to be independent, which was the 31st of May 1962. And remember, we became politically independent on the 31st of August, so we had just a few months um, to do all the planning and the preparation. It was very rough to me. Um, all kinds of committees had to be set up, and a committee on a national award, sorry, not national award, because there weren't any at the time, that came later, um, on the flag, the design of the flag. And um, on the coat of arms committee was set up, and another committee was set up on flag etiquette. In other words, how you use the national flag. Because that is something I think that um, people should be taught in school here, because some of the things I've been seeing are really horrendous. Um, and uh, those committees, those two committees, uh, also looked, uh, one of them at any rate, looked at the issue of emblems the national flower, the, uh, the um, national bird, uh, the anthem, and so on. Um, one committee was chaired by a gentleman called Cambridge, that was the coat of arms, the main committee, and, um, and flag. And the other one on flag etiquette was chaired by a gentleman called Boo, BWS. And these uh, committees worked very hard. Uh, there were a couple of people who were members of both committees, like the National Archivist at the time, the Government Archivist, Mr. Minos Sulal. Um, and they came up with the design of the flag, and they came up with um, the flag editing. So that was it. The National Anthem, I don't know if you know this, but the national anthem that we have today, the part from the Love of the Green Fire the Pope and Press, etc., um, was originally written in different words, not for Trinidad and Tobago at all, 
but for the Federation of the West Indies. Okay. It was written by a gentleman called Pat Castani, mm -hmm. who uh, was born in Diana, but of Trinidad and Tobago, and it was written in 1958. What happened with all the rush to independence is that his answer, written for the Federation, as I said, was modified for an anthem for Trinidad and Tobago. And the interesting one of these days, uh, you can see the, the two versions, the original version of 58 and what we have today in 19, uh, or what came about in 1962 and what we have today. Um, the national flower was uh, chosen to name, it was named after the last Spanish governor of Trinidad, not Trinidad and Tobago, Trinidad. Uh, that is Chacon. Chacon. We have a Chacon tree in the body mm -hmm. um, The British came, as you know, in 1797 and um, took over Trinidad, not Tobago, we got there already that uh, And um, we became Trinidad and Tobago later on. And when the two islands were joined administratively together and then independence in 1962. The flower, which was a rare flower and still is, because you don't see it about the day too much, um, matched uh, at least one color in the national flag, which is red, and also um, the coat of arms, also red. And you'll notice the colors red, white, and black appear both on the national flag and in the coat of arms, and they have significance. The red stands for uh, energy of the people, the vitality of the island, of, 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 of the country, um, or the country to be, because you're going to the country, um, the warmth of the sun, etc., etc. Uh, the white represents the sea that binds the island, as well as the purity of our aspiration. And um, the black represents strength, unity of purpose, and also the wealth of the island, because uh, we're looking at the an oil, of course, which is black. And these three colors uh, work together, representing earth, fire, and water, as they call it, also appear in the coat of arms, which um, I have two little difficulties with myself. There's nothing to be done about it now. Mm -hmm. um, the first difficulty is that I would not myself have chosen the Coke to represent the table. Coke has become a considerable agricultural test. I myself would have chosen a different word, maybe mm -hmm. the Mark to represent the table, but yeah. there we are, it's just that history. Mr. Um, Thomas, and I, I, I just want to jump in before we, we run out of time. When you, in your previous answer, you mentioned um, a sort of displeasure um, in, based on the way things are going right now. Could you just elaborate a little bit more on that answer? It's not known only right now. It's over a period of time. Um, I recall um, that for the several first years after independence, um, we, uh, I was a young man at the time, typically, but uh, to the older people in the public service, especially. Um, the San Francisco and the Junior Malls and the Dodge Alley, etc., etc. etc. Um, San Francisco, the Harold Fraser. These are people who were confident, and so was I, of my generation, confident. We you know, didn't have any feeling of, 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 of being second class on the international scene. Uh, we felt we knew what we had to do. We had to know everything, of course, what we learned to do, etc. And I thought, Repeat, I repeat, as far as I'm concerned, independence is essentially a question of what is in the head. Um, psychological independence, if you want to call it that way. Or frightened, maybe. And I am not, I have not been seeing that too much in the last several years. I'm seeing too much of a, a looking abroad, a dependence on this and dependence on that. I'm not seeing the kind of national thinking and national getting together. I see a lot of people shooting their mouths off. That's a different matter than we would have that. But in terms of uh, thinking about the country, in terms of trying to get things together, 
designed to improve the country generally at all ages. I have not been seeing too much of that. And to me, knowing what was there in the beginning, I'm somewhat disappointed. I understand. Uh, so we celebrate our 59th independence tomorrow, Mr. Dumas. And we do hope that as things um, continue to evolve, that maybe you will have a different perspective. And of course, of course, that um, perspective that you have now may change. We thank you very much for your time, Mr. Dumas, for chatting with us on the Now Morning Show. And I do wish you a happy Independence Day tomorrow. Thank you very much for chatting with us. Thank you very much. Many happy returns. Thank you very much, sir.